My name is Eric Lang. I'm a game designer. I've been for over 15 years. I've done uh, games for Fantasy Flight Games, for Wizards of the Coast, for Aldrac Entertainment, for Cool Men You're Not, for, um, for Z-Man Games, for WizKids. And this is my opportunity to make a game that I've never done before. It's just a big horror storytelling game with lots of atmosphere and lots of, uh, and lots of actual real terror that can really scare players. And I'm really looking forward to making this reality. The seven sins have manifested. They destroy us from within. They claw their way into our world. The others. Uh, I remember this one afternoon. I was in Singapore on a uh, working on something else. I visited my producer, uh, who showed me. Uh, he said, "Come over, Eric," and showed me this art that on his computer, which blew my mind. It's uh, I saw a picture of what is uh, what you guys know as Pride, the Avatar, um, with his like tentacles and craziness I thought and I was like what game is this he says it's not a game yet I'm like it is now because I'm making this uh, and then he showed me some more shots of the heroes like uh, all I, all the heroes from that are in team alpha box he had the art for that at that time I was like I'm definitely making this game I could immediately picture this like dark like not post-apocalyptic but like near apocalyptic world where you guys are, like, these guys are obviously the last stand against these horrible, like, otherworldly, Cthulhu-type creatures. And that, from that point on, and it's been about two years now, that it just, it's always been a game that begged to tell a story through gameplay. And I was really excited about that. Born of sin, born of corruption, the ancient menace is summoned again. So the others is a it's a horror board game that is centered around three primary themes. It's around terror, corruption, and redemption. And there, it's played with uh, two to five players, where one player is playing the seven sins of the apocalypse, and they're trying to ruin the last vestiges of the world and bring it into horrible corruption. And the other players are playing heroes. They're, they all have a kind of a dark past of their own, but they are trying to redeem the, the last city of Haven against the Seven Sins. This is kind of their last stand, and they're gonna be cooperating against them. And unfortunately, the power, even the very powers that they use are corrupt and can cause them to, if they're not careful, to turn to the dark side, and which is terrible, of course, and makes them lose even more. So. On one side, it's this really badass, like killing monsters with rail guns and magic swords and holy books kind of game. But on the other hand, it's a game of like absolute terror and like you're you're always against all odds and you have to be careful not to, in the very fight that you're against the very uh, demons that you're fighting, become them yourself. The sins that once tormented our souls are poised to consume the entire world. There are three main story modes. Uh, uh, each one of them, I can almost let you guess, uh, one of the modes is terror, one of them is corruption, and one of them is redemption. There are three different ways to play the same game. In the terror mode, the heroes are trying to defend the city from just being outright destroyed. The Seven Sins have brought their monsters in and just like knocking down districts and uh, blowing up buildings and stuff and just killing everybody they can. In the corruption mode, the, uh, the Seven Sins are really trying to turn the city against the heroes and bring the heroes as, to the dark side and win as quickly as they can that way. So the heroes have to sanctify the city against corruption while at the same time managing their own very carefully. Uh, as a, that's a, the most grimmest, darkest version of the game. And then there's the redemption version, uh, the redemption story mode, which is the Seven Sins trying to uh, trying to take the souls of everybody in the city, and the heroes have to save them as uh, as they can. So that is the most. That game has a lot of a lot of hidden information and a lot of heroes trying to guess where the Sins player has put all the innocence and or the fire or the corruption and stuff. It's they're just very different ways of playing the same game. The heroes cooperate entirely as a group. They're a very tight-knit unit. They are actually, in fact, a uh, supernatural defense force that they call FAITH as an acronym. Uh, and they are always together. However, the, uh, because each player has a dark past, 
the, which is assigned to them by the Seven Sins players, so the players themselves don't even know which one of them is more susceptible to corruption. If the tainted player becomes corrupt, then they have to reveal their corruption card, and if they are the tainted one, then that player loses control of that character and it goes and it joins the bad guy. The player will stay on that side and will have to take a new character, but now the bad guy just gained a new horrifying monster to attack the players with. And if that happens too often, the players will just lose outright. So the players have to be very careful. They have to manage, they have to anticipate like who is the, uh, the sins player, who are they, is he trying to kill or who is he trying to corrupt? And they have to, they've got to play accordingly. Our darkest secrets have manifested. Our inner monsters now roam the streets. So this was a very challenging game to make. Uh, it is a horror game that I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to rely on having to use flavor text and, uh, and story to scare players. I mean, of course the game has a really interesting backstory, but I wanted to Used, I want to make the game mechanics scare people, and there are a number of ways to do that, right? Of course, there's overwhelming odds. The players are always against um, like unbelievable odds, so even when they're winning, they feel like they're being crushed. And it's true, the game is also very brutal. Like It is possible for, if the heroes are not careful, to just be killed outright. It's possible for a hero to be killed in one attack, so you have to be very careful about that. Um, the other way is that uh, there's a lot of hidden information in the game. The player's information is all open. They know what their heroes can do, they can, they can speak to each other, but the Sins player hears everything. The Sins player uh, has things he can do that everybody knows, he can always attack with monsters, but he has this hand of cards that enhances his attacks, that changes the, that changes the game on the fly, that creates effects like that. and. The players never know. They have no idea how he's going to enhance his attacks, how he's going to create more danger for them. And the bad guy always has these cards. So the players are always dealing with the unknown. And of course, what's more scary than the unknown? Be prepared or be consumed. 